Urophilometry is a test that measures the volume of urine released per unit time, the speed at which it is released and how long the release takes to diagnose or exclude dividing difficulties. Its units are ml per second. What is the role of micturation reflux? The urinary flow reflects the final result of micturation process consisting of detrusor function, bladder neck opening and urethral conductivity. A graphical plot of flow rate versus time along with certain parameters calculated from the test data is used to diagnose urinary outflow obstruction or lower urinary tract dysfunction. How is urophilometry performed? Patient will be asked to drink water until feel ready to pass urine, then empty bladder on the urophilometer, a graph of flow rate ml against the time is recorded. The normal urine flow curve is like this. As you can see here, the urophilo pattern is bell shaped. Normal widened volume is more than 200 ml. The average flow rate is more than 15 ml per second. The maximum flow rate is 20 to 30 ml per second. The flow time from initiation to completion of urination is 15 to 30 seconds. Here we have abnormal plateau shaped graph and decreased Q max. Here the Q max is 7 ml per second. The possible causes include urethral stricture, posterior urethral walls, meatal stenosis, and bladder neck dysfunction. Here we have superflow or the tower pattern, possibly because of poor urethral resistance. On the top right side in this table, we have a pattern which shows several peaks in the Qmax. It is possibly caused by repetitive Valsava maneuver straining leading to fluctuation and intermittent strain. Possible causes include bladder outflow obstruction, unsustained detrusor contraction. In the second pattern, we have reduced Qmax, a rapid upstroke, but with the reduced Qmax giving a plateau shape. Possible causes include a urethral stricture, external urethral compression or bladder outflow obstruction, for example with a prolapse, following continent surgery, failure of the bladder neck relaxation or the acontractile detrusor. The last pattern shows very high Qmax, a rapid upstroke and downstroke. The reason may be possible detrusor overactivity, high speed squirting to overcome an obstruction. Here we will talk about the urophilometry parameters. The first is widened volume in ml, the total volume collected in measuring jar during the widening or the recording period. The second is average flow rate in ml per second, it is the average of the total flow during the widening time. Third one is maximum flow rate in ml per second, maximum value of the free flow rate during the widening period. Maximum flow rate is also called the peak flow rate. Flow rate is measured in ml per second. Time to maximum flow rate or second, it is the time at which maximum flow rate occurs. The flow time is measured in seconds. When we study the interpretation of this urophilometry report, we come to know that there is prolonged time to maximum flow and decreased maximum flow rate as seen in the bladder neck rigidity. Here we have box like flow curve pattern with a low flow rate typically due to urethral stricture. In this urophilometry report we have irregular flow curve due to detrusor contraction combined with abdominal straining or fluctuating obstruction in the lower urinary tract. There is abrupt decrease of flow rate due to a brief contraction of external urethral sphincter, most likely caused by a patient's discomfort and not due to sphincter dyssynergia. In this urophilometry graph, we have intermittent flow curves as seen in abdominal straining without detrusor contraction, extremely high maximum flow rate and brief voiding time as seen in female bladder insufficiency especially the bladder base insufficiency. Staccato pattern on urophilometry. 
It is defined as irregular and fluctuating pattern during widening, but the flow is continuous and never reaches zero during widening. It indicates the dysfunctional widening and that rules are under activity. Here we have different patterns on Europhlometry, which include tower patterns, staccato, interrupted, plateau, and the bell shaped. Now, what factors affect Europhlometry testing? Psychological discomfort has to be minimized in order to obtain a proper widening representation of the habitual pattern during the flow measurement and a patient's cooperation is essential. Other factors which influence the accuracy of Europhlometry include straining with urination, body movements during urination and certain medications that affect the bladder and sphincter muscle tone. I would like to talk about the Centron Euroflometers, which have a unique remote mounted sensor due to which the patient is able to wide in privacy, thus avoiding the psychosomatic side effect which may influence the measurement results. How to do patient's preparation before conducting Euroflometry testing? First is that of the patient's debriefing. A physician should explain the procedure of conducting Euroflometry test to the patient. Generally, no prior preparation such as fasting or sedation is required. The patient is instructed to drink about 3 to 4 glasses of water a couple of hours before the test is performed in order to ensure that, he, that her bladder is full. In addition, she should not empty uh, her bladder before arriving for the urophlometry testing. Then based on the patient's medical condition, the physician may request other specific preparations as well. What care is needed after urophlometry? After the urophlometry test, generally, there is no specific type of the care required. However, the physician may give patient additional or alternate instruction after urophlometry test depending upon the situation. Now, is urophlometry test risky? Because urophlometry is non-invasive procedure, it is safe and has no side effects for the patient. Now, what are the different methods of assessing the urine flow? The three commonly used methods include, first of all, gravimetric method. In this method, the rate of change of the weight of the voided urine in the collecting jug is converted into flow rate. The next method is rotating disc method in which the voided uh, fluid is directed into the disc increasing its inertia and the flow rate is proportional to the amount of extra power that is required to keep the disc spinning at a constant rate. The last method is that of the capacitor dipstick in which a metal capacitor strip is attached to the side of the flow meter. So thank you so much that was all about Euroflowmetry. Subscribe on Ops and Gaini. Allah Hafiz.